Hey everyone, and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah, and this is part five of my Blob Animal Art Challenge series. Stick around to the end of this video to hear about what I have planned for next week's video. Am I milking this challenge for more videos than I should? Yes. But I have no regrets because it's fun, creative, colorful, and less stressful than some of my other video ideas. As far as editing and concepts and the work I do beforehand, why can't I just do my usual animal fact research art videos. Instead of milking this one challenge for so long, the answer is simple. I'm prioritizing my Animal Crossing Island like an adult because I can do what I want. To a fault. So strictly to prove myself that I accomplish things in my life, you best believe I will be making a video dedicated to my Animal Crossing Island at some point. I'm obsessed with how my island is looking so far and I think it's bomb as heck. So I'm not even that guilty or that disappointed in myself as much as everyone around me is. <laughs> Anyway, with all of that out of the way, as you can see, filming Sarah is already ahead of me, so I think that's my cue to quit chatting and get onto what's relevant on the screen. Since this is part 5, I am using the fifth and final row of my watercolor travel set to fill this page in my sketchbook. This row is most of my neutrals for this watercolor set, so browns and grays and blacks. After I finish doing all these random shapes on the page, I'm gonna wait for it to dry and then doodle all over the blobs to create the animals that I see in them. Something interesting about this set is some of the colors do this weird chunky thing, but I think that's mostly because if I were to put it on my color palette beforehand and scrub out all of the little bits on there, I wouldn't have to do it on my paper like I am in this video. But shout out to my awesome sketchbook for taking it like a champ though. If you want this champion sketchbook like mine, I highly recommend it. And if you look at the links in the description, they are affiliate links. So if you want to help out this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. So here are the final blobs to start imagining animals into. Before I start drawing on them, what do you see in these shapes? Comment below, I'd love to hear it. They are such abstract shapes and it's natural to see different things because I mean, we're all different people. So take a moment and let me know down below. So for this first blob, since I accidentally smeared the long bit and was forced to make it a bit longer, it's no surprise I saw it as a trunk and turned the rest into a cute elephant face. For this one, I saw that more pointed bit on the right as a beak, so I made this really annoyed duck face. And for this blob, I saw the elongated bit on the end and the curved side as an anteater face. It took me some rotating to see this, but once I did, I really like how he turned out. For this one, I saw that swoop at the top left as a Parasaurolophus head, how they have that scooped head bone kind of on the top of their head and their forehead. If you know what a Parasaurolophus is, you know what I mean. But as I started to try and turn this blob into one, it started to look more like a cow head. So for some reason, I decided to give him spikes. I guess in my head, spikes equals more dinosaur-like. I, I don't know. <laughs> in this blob, I saw the tip in the back as a vanishing point for some kind of elongated animal. So why not make it into the most basic elongated animal, a snake? I love the little mlem tongue I added to this guy. With this blob, since it is more basic and round and not much to go off of as far as legs or other appendages, I took the color into account more for this one and I made this cute little hedgehog with a ton of spikes and tiny little paws. Now the second I added those freckles and spikes, I saw the Able Sisters from Animal Crossing, which to me is just one of the many other hints that I might be too obsessed with this game, I guess. These next two resemble the Animal Crossing-esque villagers like rhinos and deers, and I can't help it. This deer one, I had Fauna in my mind, which is one of my favorite Animal Crossing villagers. If you know who she is, you'll know that she is just so sweet and kind looking. So I drew elements of her from my memory because I wasn't really looking at anything. I just kind of had that feeling of Fauna in my head and I'm obsessed with her. I tried to add that soft, sweet expression on her face and those cute little spots. So overall it gives the same sweet fawn effect. For this one, I saw that big curve at the top as a belly. So I made a bear resting on his back on some kind of black rock or pillow, maybe after a heavy meal or he just has a big belly. You know how bears hibernate. They eat as much as they can and then they sleep for a long time on a black rock or pillow, I guess. This blob next to the sea otter one from part four are definitely my favorite blobs I've made. 
the long bit at the end on the right along with the squared opposite end. I decided to turn into a beaver tail and body respectively. And something I love about beavers is their webbed little feet, rounded snouts, and of course their tails. I felt like there was something missing and of course those two little buck teeth did the trick. I do wish I thought of it sooner though, so that I could blend it in a little better with the feet and in the blob itself. But what are you gonna do? I think that's one of the other charms of this challenge that I like so much. Because you're kind of forced to improvise sometimes. These are pretty permanent mediums, so once you put it down, you can't really take it off. And I guess that's just an inevitable challenge of this media in general. This blob, I thought about the color more heavily too, and with the long shape and rounded bottom, I turned him into a cute moose head with antlers. That concludes the blob making of every single color of my watercolor travel set. If you haven't seen my last blob animal art challenge series videos, that's a mouthful, I think you should. I made a playlist of all of them for your convenience, so I'd recommend you binge those if you enjoyed this one. I will say that after doing so many of these, I am starting to see shapes as things more quickly than in the first couple challenges, and I think that's something that's really handy as an artist, to be able to see how parts of your art look in different ways, and from there be able to shape the art into a direction you want the viewer to see it, and making it more clear for what you're trying to convey in it, and I think that's a really important skill. For my video upload next Friday, I did find an extra sheet of watercolor paper hidden in my stacks of other types of paper that I didn't really notice before, so since now I actually have a worthy paper paper for my mixed media process, I will finally be doing what I did in the very first part of this series and take a blob from each part that I didn't do this for, so part two, three, four, and five, and I will be taking one of my favorite blobs from each and making one big illustration with all of them in one. I'm really excited to see what I come up with, and I hope you are too. So look forward to that next week. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment what is your favorite blob critter from this video. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe because I do upload a new video every single Friday, and I do have a lot of other fun content planned for this channel, so it would mean a lot if you would hit subscribe and join my little art family. If you're curious and want to know what sketchbook or pens or watercolors I'm using, I always have all of the supplies I use in every video in the description below and all of these have my own unique Amazon affiliate link. So if you like what I do and want to support this channel, it would mean a lot if you would use those links specifically because I do get a tiny commission from those sales if you decide to buy it. So if you want to be art supplies twins with me, please use those links and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. My favorite supply down there is definitely my sketchbook because I've been using this one specifically for a few books now. And I love it because not only is the paper good quality for all kinds of mixed media that I like to do, but you can customize the cover, which I may or may not be doing in another video in the future. Wink. Anyway, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ugh. That concludes. Wow. Okay. That concludes.